Hey, Christine Regan Lake here. Hope all is well. So welcome back to my channel. If you are enjoying my videos, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. And if you want to hit the bell button, uh, it'll notify you whenever I upload new videos because I'm constantly putting up new content. So today I want to talk to you about the emotional and psychological effects of carrying a large debt burden. So in our country, and probably around the world today, but de definitively in the United States, there is really a debt epidemic. There is a huge portion of the population, um, like the average American carries at least $15,000 worth of credit card debt. And unfortunately for our young people, our students graduating from college, the average student graduates with at least a $40,000 debt burden in terms of their student loans. And that's only for someone who's gone on to get like their four-year degree. If you go beyond that and go for like upper graduate degrees, you know, th those numbers can be in above an excess of like $200,000. So what are the psychological effects of carrying debt? Well, there's quite a number of them. So one of the one of the most um, uh, problematic emotional states is just kind of living in a state of anxiety and depression over this debt. And the reason that can happen is because there's a feeling of like hopelessness when you've got this huge black cloud over your head, this this debt burden that is that is following you around, you know, when you are, you know, trying to move forward with your life. You know, my brother was talking about how the fact that, you know, when he just bought his house, you know, a lot of his friends were like, wow, that's awesome. You bought an amazing neighborhood. Part of the reason he was able to do that is because he didn't have any debt. You know, he worked his way through college, as did his uh, wife. And so they didn't have that black cloud over them, over their head that kept them from being able to, you know, buy the home of their dreams, and, you know, for their family with their two children and stuff like that. So, you know, when you have that black cloud of debt hanging over your head, it can be it can be very overwhelming. You can feel hopeless because you don't see the end. There's no end in sight. Another problem with it is that, you know, people don't understand that, you know, that you really need to pay that off as quickly as possible. They don't really understand the full impact of how the interest just keeps, you know, you know, growing and growing and growing exponentially the longer, you know, they carry the debt. And so they'll make minimum payments on it instead of making, you know, double the payments or triple the payments or throwing as much money as it as you can. So, you know, anxiety and depression is a huge, huge symptom that people struggle with when they are carrying large debt burdens. So what are some of the other emotional resonances that go along with carrying debt? Well, shame. People struggle with shame when they are carrying large debt. You know, say someone who has a shopping addiction, you know, they've got a $30,000 credit card bill. You know, I had a friend of mine who struggled with it and, you know, she had $80,000 worth of credit card debt. Uh, her and her husband both, you know, had impulse control issues with their credit card and, you know, there's, there's a ripple effect. And so that, that black cloud was always over her head. So people struggling with debt, who especially when you have spent it on things that are non-essential, you know, it's one thing to invest in yourself and you put yourself through college and you took out, you know, some student loans for that. It's, you know, it's, um, you may have the stress of it, but at least you're investing in yourself. When you blow $40,000 on crap around your house, now that comes with shame because now you know it was irresponsible and now you're struggling with the feelings of kind of, you know, being, in, you know, making an unintelligent decision, the shame of, you know, just buying stuff you didn't need and things like that. And shame is a very, very low vibrating emotion. So, you know, the resonance of that, it, it can make it harder to, you know, face your, um, face your issue. You know, when you're struggling with shame, it's a very, very heavy thing to look at. And so what does the shame do? The shame can cause you to move into another symptom, which is denial, where, you know, so now you've, 
you've charged up a bunch of crap on your credit card that you didn't need, you're feeling shameful about it. And now because you don't want to face that shame, you don't want to feel those feelings of shame. Now you go into denial and you don't really look at the credit card bill and you just kind of keep running it up and keep charging stuff and whatever. And that denial keeps you in a place of victimhood because you cannot fix and solve a problem you refuse to look at. So we've got feelings of shame, we've got feelings of denial, we've got feelings of anxiety and depression. What are some of the other emotional, psychological impact that people struggle with when they have a large debt burden? Well, you can feel anger and frustration. You know, if you're working in a job that you don't really like and, you know, you're, you're carrying this huge debt burden, every time you got to pay your bills, you get stressed out. Well, now you could start to blame your employer, uh, you know, that he should pay you more money. And the reality is your employer didn't run up your debt, you did. But that feeling of feeling stuck, feeling like hopeless, feeling helpless, not sure how you're going to get out of it, those all of these things contribute to that anger and frustration and we don't tend to make intelligent decisions from a place of anger and frustration that tends to be where we make triggered reactions decisions and now you can make even more decisions you know you're like well I hate this job my my boss doesn't pay me as much as I should I'm going to go buy those you know new skis that I want you know as a way to reward yourself but meanwhile it's really just self-sabotaging because you're making yourself even in more debt um, so what else is uh um, another one of the emotional states that you experience well you can experience feelings of regret you know you look back and you're like you know why did I do that you know and, and really it kind of goes along hand in hand with shame shame and regret looking back and what if what if what if where would I be if I hadn't done that things like that and then the other one is fear you know just straight up fear like how am I going to pay off this debt it's so overwhelming well here's the thing that you have to think about in terms of what is the long-term solution for you. There's really there's really three things that you need to do to establish really sound financial foundation for yourself. The first thing is you need to understand what your beliefs are around money. You have to look and understand and look straight into the face what your what your patterns are around money, what your fears are around money. There are 12 different mental disorders that are labeled under financial, uh, you know, financial, um, financial disorders, financial PTSD, you know, where there's avoidance issues and things like that. So you have to understand what is my blueprint for my financial position? What is my blueprint for money and wealth creation? If you don't understand what that blueprint is, if you don't understand where when you have contradictory and dysfunctional beliefs at the subconscious level that are sabotaging your financial situation, you'll get yourself out of, you'll figure out how to get rid of this debt, but you'll run it up again. You'll continue to self-sabotage because you don't understand what your financial blueprint is. So if you want to understand what your financial blueprint is, I have a free money test at masteringmymoneymindset.com. You can go there, take the test, and get a sense of what your beliefs are. I have a program that'll take you through how to rewire your subconscious beliefs around money to set you up to succeed, to release those fears, beliefs, traumas, and patterns around money that are sabotaging you and your financial future. So the first thing is, that's the first thing, is getting clear on what your beliefs are, changing them, and turning that around. The second thing is you need debt solutions. You need to figure out how to get that debt paid off in an intelligent and, and um, efficient manner. Uh, I'll include some resources in the description box to uh, help you with that in terms of figuring out your debt solutions and as well as you need a vehicle. You know if you're working an hourly job trading time for money that's something that you might want to you know understand that there's only so much money you can make trading time for money because there's only so many hours in a day. If you really want a sound financial future, you need to figure out how to make money while you're sleeping. You need to have passive streams of income. You need to be able to make money while you're sleeping. That is really how you create a, a sound financial future for yourself, having healthy beliefs around money, having released all your blocks, traumas, um, dysfunctional beliefs and habits and patterns, paying off your debt, and then putting yourself into a vehicle and having a strategy for wealth creation that will give you a foundation for long-term success. So I hope you found value in that. Um, 
As always, I'd like to bring attention to my link in the description box for my fundraising page for Operation Underground Railroad. I am an abolitionist, and it is my mission to raise a million dollars for Operation Underground Railroad to rescue children from human trafficking. There are over two million children in the slave trade today, and it is a $150 billion industry. It is the fastest growing criminal enterprise on the planet. And I am asking for anyone who feels so inspired and uh, who wants to help rescue these children, if you would donate to the fundraising link below. Every single penny goes directly to them. And, uh, you know, we really need to rescue these children. They need our love and our leadership to set them free. So I hope you found value in this video. Have a beautiful day, and I look forward to speaking with you again soon. Thanks. Bye.